Tell the villain like I'm trapped in my damn mind Tell the villain like I'm rapping a damn line Tell the villain like my life is a damn game Nigga really wanna die in the night time Hey, lol, uh, what's up y'all, so I wanted to review the new HBO show, The Idol. Now I am not going to be like those two-faced veggie fucks, who go, I'm only watching this for Jenny, or, I'm only watching this for Lily Rose Depp, or, The Weeknd, I guess. People who do that, to me, are hypocrites, just say you want to watch the show, and move it a buck, cause if you were truly watching it for whoever, you would not react or review it, you would just watch their scenes on YouTube or Twitter, or you would not watch it period. Reacting, reviewing, or making a funny TikTok is still engaging with the show, like please use your brains. I will be watching The Idol, because the core premise of, a pop star going through it, especially a female pop star, and being exploited by the industry, sounds very intriguing to me. Of course I'm with a lot of y'all, fuck Sam Levinson. But I'm not here for him, I'm here, for hopefully a good watch. Let's begin. Toss. We are immediately introduced to our main character, Jocelyn, a pop star preparing for her. Come back, after a one-year hiatus, which was due to a psychotic break caused by the death of her mother. Already in this scene it sets the scene for what we are to expect from Jocelyn. She is a true performer, easily adapting her emotions however she sees fit, in a sense we see her manipulation, which I hope we will see more of as the season progresses. Also that face card is immaculate. This scene is also perfectly directed, the imagery of the painting of the four men looking at her is something I didn't expect from the, idol. It's very on the nose about the male gaze and the power that men have over the objectification of woman bodies. I also loved Lily Rose Depp referencing Marilyn Monroe, photographed by Slim Aarons. The lure theme song also plays for the first time, and in a sense Joss is luring the audience in. But what is the image saying? That she's young. In this scene we see Joss in this beautiful shot. She is a spectacle, only for the viewer's amusement, this sort of painting that people watch, take pictures of, and others use for monetary gain. Then of course we get this scene. The robe, mm -hmm. the hospital wristband, I mean, are, are we romanticizing mental illness? Absolutely. And you're fine with that? Everything that she has been through, she should be wearing a hospital wristband. Mental illness is sexy. No, it's not. Which is exactly what I expected from, the idol. Now dare I say, as disgusting as this is, it is very realistic of the world we live in, and of certain people, and I have to give kudos to Idol for this. If you live in Sioux City, Iowa, you are never going to meet a girl like Jocelyn. She's not walking down the street, she didn't go to your high school, she doesn't work at the bar or the diner, and she did not marry your best friend. And if on the off chance she did, she is still never ever going to fuck you, unless she has some very, very serious mental problems. And that right there is why mental illness is sexy. When Nikki, a record label, executive, who's worked with Jocelyn for years, says this we are all appalled, but the truth is, this line of thinking is very common, and very realistic of a lot of people, people are heavily flawed and a lot of people, take advantage of mental illness for their own benefit. Best example is Selena Gomez, and I only bring up this up because some of her delusional fans, seem to think this is a reference to Selena. I promise you, Abel is not thinking of her. Which is also crazy to me cause, Selena can't sing, is not a, pop star, and I say that with heavy air quotes, and Selena is not the first artist, or person to weaponize mental illness, or take advantage of their mental illness for sympathy, or money. But of course, because Abel dated her, a lot of you idiots will pull this parallel. Hmm. Here's something I've noticed about Selena fans, side note, a lot of y'all want everyone, and I mean everyone, to believe homegirl is innocent and a victim, and yes in certain situations perhaps, but most of the time I doubt, Selena is an instigator, an instigator who pretends to be innocent after starting some mess. Now Joss is very different because she is the victim in this situation, but doesn't want to be seen as one. She is aware that certain people use her, and she's okay with it, because in turn, is using them. And then we get what is the first plot of this, which is that a photo has leaked of Joss. This photo just leaked. 11 minutes ago. Yeah, but what, what is it? Honey has come. What? On her face. 
Her team is sent into a frenzy, and is basically trying to figure out a solution, because her comeback tour has been announced, and a picture like this is bad all around, but mostly of course, it's bad for sales and image, literally fuck her team, the only person who seems to sort of care for Jocelyn, is her assistant slash best friend, by the way I don't think they are actually best friends, but she is Joss's only best friend from what we see. Her team are self-obsessed, tone deaf, some privileged, white assholes. This adds to the realism of Jocelyn's situation, because they do not care for her, they just care to make money off of her. Hey, so, I'm Chaim, I'm hi. Jocelyn's manager. Talia Hirsch, Vanity Fair. Vanity Fair, okay, how you doing? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Also Talia, a Vanity Fair reporter, comes over to profile Joss, presumably to get the scoop on the leaked photo, from the direct source. She also mentions she has been a fan of Jocelyn since she was a kid on. Rock House, which obviously is a reference to Britney Spears, who also was on a kids' television show. And for me, I was glad they took the child actor turned bad pipeline. It's easier for the viewer to sympathize with the protagonist, because we have all had idols we have seen go through this. Hi. We're going out tonight, you know that. Now we meet the queen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcoming Jenny Kim, the star of Korea. Fuck any of y'all hoes who think otherwise. Like that's mother right there. Her and Lily together has always been a pipe dream but now look at me win, I will always win at the end of the day. One thing I have to say, is that Jenny does so incredibly well in this show, like I knew you had it in you. I was scared at first, thought she would not quite eat, but mother will always prove me wrong. Her acting is the second best in the show, it feels so natural, real, and like she's so immersed in this role. I noticed the little hand gestures, and facial expressions she used, and I was so incredibly surprised, but not really because mother can do anything. Jenny you are so talented, this is why I will always be a Jenny Kim stan, fuck what the haters say. Um, you know, the press has been brutal, with Britney as well, like people count them out, and this is- Now we see, Joss is practicing the dance for her new song, World Class Sinner, and she is, giving us nothing, literally go girl, give us nothing. I laugh, but I can't blame her, she's going through a lot, and would rather be anywhere else. So her director tells Joss to watch Diane do it, and try to learn from her, and this is one of those scenes I was completely in a trance, watching Jenny dance is like a drug, Jenny has the best facial expressions in that little group of hers, like Jenny might have gotten 5 seconds in this 54 minute show, but she always ate it up in those 5 seconds she had, like I know she was enjoying herself so much. Also in this scene I noticed that we follow Joss's gaze, so we see her watch Diane's body as she dances then pan away to her team, she can tell something is up, but she doesn't know what. Okay. Walk! Power! Yes! I'm lick it! Bank it! Drop it! Ah! You know hip hip hip! hip around! Amazing die! Yes! Exactly what I want! God, I wish I could dance like you. Give it all you got, Joss. This is the one. Anyway Jocelyn feels the eyes on her and decides to do what she does best, give a performance, so she gets the fuck up and dances, and I mean dances, this dance scene was so fucking amazing, I loved watching it. Lily you are a star, the amount of training she had to do to learn to dance like this, I am so impressed. Like bam, hips, booty booty, face face, give me face, I was obsessed with this song and dance number. I'm just a freak yeah. Fuck yeah. After Joss finally finds out about the nude leak, she takes it quite lightly, at least, she takes it lightly in front of her team. After that, she decides to go to the sauna with Diane, and Diane acts as a sort of a lure, in a sense Diane lures Joss to the club, sort of like a whisper of the devil. And two things, first, who the fuck smokes in a sauna? Second, you can tell she is obviously not as phased about the leaking as she led on, so instead of, dealing with those feelings, she does what any person, in the Sam Levinson universe would do, she goes to a party to drink her sorrows away. I feel like the car scene that follows is heavily overlooked.
Now in this really cool car ride scene, under the lights, we see everyone's true intention, particularly, Diane and Jocelyn. Diane looks at Joss like the ultimate dream, because she wants her stature, she wants her fame, her position I guess, she has everything. She is aware she is a better dancer, and possibly a better singer, but what's the point of having that, if you're not the biggest pop star in the world? Now Joss wants to be as great of a dancer as Diane, she wants to be Diane in a small sense, able to give 100% despite her own problems. They both mirror each other's hopes and fantasies, and to drive that home, double fantasy plays, and this reaffirms this. The way I screamed when I saw Alexa, like yes mother, you will always be the star, given approximately two seconds, I ate nonetheless. Seeing Jenny interact with Lily was everything, now seeing Jenny, Alexa, and Lily interact. Idol knows its audience, and they gave me what I needed. In the club, we meet Tedros, and he immediately takes a liking to Joss, and it's in this scene we find out, Diane already knows him. Tedros had already been watching Jocelyn, but now he takes it upon himself to dance with her. Tedros says, dangerous, as his first words to Joss directly, telling her and the audience that he is in fact, dangerous. This scene was so pretty, Joss looks so fucking great. Now it's also worth noting she wears blue, which often means sadness and depression, something Joss might be going through, she is sort of sad about everything going on in her life currently. She chooses to wear a see-through, baby blue dress, to show how transparent her sadness is, but also how bold she is even in the worst of situations. When Joss and Tedros find a quiet place to make out, gross, have standards Joss, we see her covered in a very harsh red light, symbolic of the danger she is currently in. Red can mean, stop, danger ahead. Remember, this is Tedros's club, he is the danger, something Joss knows to an extent, but ignores. Also she meets him in the night, in the dark, a stark difference from the bright sun we were used to. Did your mom live here too? The next day, Joss is being interviewed by Talia, she is wearing such an amazing outfit, like girl you look good kisses. Joss wears this pastel, purple, and pink. Perhaps in this scene Joss wants to be seen as innocent, and confident. The pink representing naivety and innocence, and the purple, confidence and royalty. This is Joss's way of retaining her good girl, innocent image, while also remaining confident in the midst of the situation at hand. I think combined together, this outfit choice represents her vulnerability during this interview. When Joss is asked about her mother, she smokes a cigarette and ignores the question. Something I realized she does, a lot, when she is in any highly emotional situation, she smokes. Also Joss tends to wear sunglasses a lot, yes to protect her eyes from the sun, but also to stop anyone from seeing her cry, or, vulnerable. During this interview, Jocelyn gets very vulnerable, but we don't see it because she has her shades on, all we see is a tear roll down her cheeks. She gets emotional talking about her mother, and the leak. Lily acted the fuck out of this scene. Now we get one of the most disgusting and seriously alarming scenes from the show. I hate his vibe. <laughs> really? Yes! What's wrong with him? He's so rapey. Yeah, I kind of like that about him. Joss. No. <laughs> Gross. So disturbing. And I immediately wanted to switch off. Like please let us not glamorize rape and assault. Also this lets us know as an audience, that Joss is damaged, like seriously damaged, no sane person fantasizes about rape, unless you are mentally sick or Sam Levinson. Joss relishes in danger, and dangerous situations, and after getting a taste of that, sort of freedom, from Tedros, she wants more. Also, interesting thing, Leia is the only person I have seen, with euphoria, like makeup, showing how in this world she is out of place. She wants so badly to be a good friend to Jocelyn, so she never really puts her foot down, or calls her out, instead of berating Jocelyn, on how foul her thought process is, she is just blandly offended. When she should be a good friend, and call her out, she doesn't, because she wants Jocelyn to like, and trust her. One great thing about this scene is the dialogue feels genuine, the overuse of, like, and the breaks in speech feel realistic of a conversation between friends. A detective, he falls for the wrong woman. What happens? She kills him. Also they are watching Basic Instinct. Now I've never watched this, so I did a brief Google search.
So basically, the mysterious Catherine Tramail, a beautiful crime novelist, becomes a suspect when she is linked to the brutal death of a rock star. Investigated by homicide detective Nick Curran, Catherine seduces him into an intense relationship. Meanwhile, the murder case becomes increasingly complicated, when more seemingly connected deaths occur, and Nick's psychologist and lover, Beth Garner, appears to be another suspect. And basic instinct is sprinkled throughout the whole episode, so keep that in mind. Joss invites Tedros to her house, gross, but I have to say, I love the Tedros outfit. Covered in black, representing his place in her life. The darkness that is about to come. Through this scene we just see how creepy, nasty, and weird Tedros is, through his mannerisms, and actions. He changes his face in the mirror, a look on how he is cultivating a different personality for Jocelyn. They are both alike in the sense that they can easily adapt to a new face, in order to deceive onlookers. Now who the hell thought this was a good scene idea? <coughs> nasty. Just nasty, and it's not the first time. When Tedro sees Joe Ilm come down the stairs, he is in completely black, which usually means death, destruction, and evil. She's in the light, in the clear, dot and when she grabs his hand she is in the darkness. Symbolic of her inviting the evil and dangerous into her life. Tedros seems Jocelyn in this light, and he is very intrigued by her. The music playing is alluring, the same one played in the beginning. Except this time, Tedros is the one luring Jocelyn. Another reason is also because Jocelyn, is seducing Tedros, luring him to help her. The lure music, reminds me of a mermaid song, a song mermaids were said to use, in order to lure sailors to their destruction. Maybe in a sense, they are both luring each other to their ultimate destruction. Joss finds comfort in his darkness, cause maybe in a sense she feels understood. Someone else understands her. Cheers. Hey Joss, uh, you have to be up at 7am tomorrow. Okay. When Leia, her assistant, comes in while they're talking, the lure music is cut off. This shows how Leia seems to be her only saving grace, being the only one who truly cares for Jocelyn, and the only one who can see how dangerous this situation is becoming. Tedros is a cult leader, planting seeds of doubt already in Jocelyn's head, so she can slowly stop trusting her team, he is making her dependent on his opinion, all tricks a cult leader would have, to bring someone into their cult. Tedros does this well by seeming dangerous but inviting. Yes his clothes and persona are dark, but he combats this by being soft, spoken, and listening to Joss, things he knows will get her interested in him. I know for a fact Diane is part of this cult, and just basically offered her, friend, to Tedros on a silver platter, and Diane knows how vulnerable Jocelyn is. At anyone's most vulnerable, it's so easy to take advantage of them. Something a lot of pop stars slash entertainers have gone through, being taken advantage of the most, when they are weak or vulnerable. Jocelyn takes Tedros to her home studio, to show him her new song, which in my opinion sounded really fucking good, but she doesn't believe in it. I'm just a I don't know, I feel like it's like too superficial or something. Tedros seems to be the only person she openly talks to about her mother, well at least responds to. Which is very interesting, because she a, just met him, b, she never talks or seems to want to, when it has anything to do with her mother. This is supposed to show how she likes him because, he offers her a freedom she hadn't had in a long time. This is the first song you recorded after your mother? Yeah. Tedros tells Jocelyn he likes the song, but does not believe she is a freak, so in order to do that, he does this weird, choking thing. Honestly, it was so uncomfortable to watch, but that shouldn't shock you, especially with who directed this. He puts her red robe over her head, symbolic of the grip he has on her. He obviously can see the shit she's going through, and he is taking advantage of that, he is making her dependent on him in many ways, emotionally, physically, and now musically. He opens her up, literally and figuratively, to new dangerous experiences she's afraid to have. Tedros is obviously, some sort of creepy, devilish dude, and Jocelyn only cares about fame. In the scene, he performs some sort of ritual on her, and finishes it off by saying, now you can sing. This could also be seen as Joss selling her soul to the devil. Now you can sing.
Now you can sing. I think this line is important, in the context of the show, because this is him setting her free from everything, and in a sense him opening up the, the floodgates of danger. The Idol episode 1 was a mess but it was kinda camp at the same time. Abel cannot act though, but I will be seated for episode 2 I feel like a lot of people are just hating on Idol for no real reason, and the people who are hating on it for the right reason, I support and fully understand you. I find a lot to hate on it for. In my opinion, I prefer Idol to Euphoria. I'm so tired of the, relatable, characters and, just like you, storylines. A lot of movies and films nowadays, are very focused on being relatable and real, and deep, but you have, Idol, a show that is so fucking flawed and disgusting on certain parts, but quite honestly, one I really enjoy. Not just because of Lily and Jenny, my queens, but because it takes from the era it is trying to portray. It's very 2000s coded, while managing to stay relevant. Joss is not supposed to be relatable, or blindly loved, or hated, she's a pop star, like, duh but she is also a real person, with feelings, problems, and faults, who just happens to be a pop star, navigating that world, and how she fits into it, and the chaos that comes with her world. It feels like something that would come out of the early 2000s, and it's not trying to fully make you sympathize with Jocelyn, it's telling a story, of again, a flawed character who is given this fame and pressure, yet is battling with inner demons, figuring out life the way she can. It's a TV show LMAO, I don't know what to tell y'all. I hate how badly they handled some themes, but I love how they call out what a lot of, idols, have to face. Also if you have watched Showgirls, a movie Idol took inspiration off of, this series is very, very low-key, compared to that. Episode 2, Jocelyn summons her team, to talk about how she reworked the song. While they wait, Nikki is very dismissive, and insensitive to Jocelyn's situation. Everyone else can tell, how sensitive Jocelyn is right now. Fuck that hag, like please act your age. People die. All the time. Are you fucking joking? Everybody about? dies. Are you serious? What? Hi! Now when Jocelyn plays that remix, um, 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 what the literal, frigging fuck are those hell noises? I am all for creative choices but what the fuck? That shit is terrible. I am so in love with Jocelyn's outfit. But Jocelyn's inability, to actually hear the so-called remix, shows how under Tedro's spell she is. <sighs> Ha 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 ha, Lily's little dance, to that monstrosity of a remix, is so cute and funny. Got a giggle out of me. I mean, okay, I'll go first. I mean, it's not happening. It's not. Obviously Nikki turns the remix down, and thank God. I feel bad for Jocelyn, but I completely get her team. Wait, baby, no, 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 no. Okay, so you think you've got a bigger fucking dick than me now, princess? You want to fucking back it up a little bit and go through a little oral history of how we fucking got here? Because I am more than happy. I'll spell it out for you. Remember when your mother got sick? It was Finkelstein and I. We came to you and we said we should cancel that tour. And you said no. Nikki, don't. Please, I can do it. Trust me. And then a week before you're going to play Madison Square Garden, I get a call that you are out of your fucking mind, babbling, up on the roof, talking to, uh, things in outer fucking space. All right, all right. We don't have to rehash So wait, so what do we do? We cut our losses. We refund the tickets. We spend eight months getting you healthy. And then we spend millions sending you around the world, putting you with producers to give you an EP of giant fucking big titted hits. And now you're going to sit here and tell me that it's not me. I don't like it. Well, that's too bad. It's too fucking late. That train has left the station. And whether you like it or not, you are going for that ride. In this scene, we see how Nikki truly sees Jocelyn. She sees her as baggage at this point. A lost cause. Still a lost cause she will use. No one in her team really defends or stands up for Jocelyn. They just watch on. Jocelyn is a lot, but she did not deserve to be talked to like that. Like a fucking product, with no feelings or input. I love that Joss calls them out on it though. Jocelyn, furious, and feeling abonded by Tedros, goes back to her room. Her manager, is the only one who goes to comfort her. I just didn't realize how hard this was going to be without her. When I lost my mother, 
I was a wreck for a year. I love this scene so much, because we see Jocelyn talk about her mother, someone that means a lot to her, and completely changed everything for her, mentally, when she died, and she has not fully dealt with the loss of her mother. What are you doing right now? No, I'm just at the club. Nice. Tedros finally calls Jocelyn, and as Jocelyn is talking to Tedros, he proceeds to lie to her about his whereabouts, and current activity. We see Isaac, talk to Leia as well, like both him and Tedros are on a business call. And they are, bringing in new people to the cult. Tedros is obviously toying, and using Jocelyn. Jocelyn goes back to her day-to-day -day activities, we see her scroll through Twitter, seeing the nasty things, people are saying about her leak. Jocelyn is back to being depressed and uninterested in her lifestyle. The scene where Jocelyn aggressively brushes her hair, is our first sign of her falling apart again, she doesn't want to be this, perfect pop star, anymore. Jocelyn, is showing signs of self-harm. This is later confirmed, when Nikki, unsympathetically, tells her manager Jocelyn is cutting. Almost three and a half hours late, as she was in a makeup trailer they were having to airbrush cuts on her inner thighs. Now Jocelyn is shooting for her music video, and she is very unsatisfied with the results, which is more that she is unsatisfied with herself. Jocelyn is obviously showing signs of unsteadiness. Watching this scene made my stomach turn, I was afraid she was going to hurt herself, or worse. I was just, I think I was just too focused on like getting all the beats right, but I'll, I'll... You're really pushing it, okay? Ow! If you're not there to catch me like when I'm, when I'm falling, it's just, I'm gonna... I'm... We then see Nikki notice Diane, and I hated this, cause I know Diane planned it. Love you Jenny, hate Diane. Fucking a Joss. Right there? Mm -hmm. That's Diane. Diane, why? She's out dancing. Yo, I just have to give it up to Lily Rose Depp. Her acting in the scene her manager talks to her is insanely great. We see Jocelyn slowly unravel. She is so desperately trying to hold it together, but she is not okay. It's salad. Look at me. Hey, look at me. You got this. You can do that. You can do it. I can do this. I, I mean this. Because it's... We also find out, shocker, Ted Rose is broke and doesn't have a traceable identification. Uh you guys, a lot was happening in this scene, I could barely focus, like it was getting very intense. What does he look like? He's a, he's a, he's a person of color. Yeah. Are you saying he's black? You can say black. You're allowed to say black. Girl please shut the fuck up. Do you have anything to say, other than person of color? Racist bitch. Anyway, Jocelyn's team is trying to find out who Tedros is, and Talia is getting more information, for her article on Jocelyn. In this scene we see how Hyam and Destiny are trying to be parental figures for Jocelyn. Doing the best they can, to make sure she is okay, and it made me happy to see someone in her corner, because Jocelyn is really going through it, she isn't hitting the moves right, and when she begins to cry, I was about to lose it. But that's why we gotta step in. Our mother's born now, so now we are new parents. Okay, okay, okay. okay I'm not, I'm that's what we... Kim my hair, touch me anywhere, pull and chain. Okay, yeah, no, you're incredible. Uh we see Diane, basically, getting offered a record deal, like fuck that fake bitch. Diane, clearly does not care for Jocelyn, but instead cares about her own career and self, despite knowing Jocelyn is not mentally okay. This to me, is a very realistic depiction, of a lot of people in the industry doing anything to get to the top, even if it means backstabbing others. Now Jenny was really singing, like yes, 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 show off those vocals, but what the fuck? Were those cornrows? Like Miss Jenny I know you are not trying to follow in Lisa, the culture vultures, footsteps. This also makes perfect sense, for Diane's character as well, someone like Diane would obviously not care about cultural appropriation. Oh my goodness, like Psy. Jocelyn does another take, this time giving her all, only for the camera to not record. Like, she finally got it right, only for it to not be in focus. It's a good take, right? I'm sorry, Joss. It was out of focus. The whole take was out of focus. Jocelyn's life, and mind, are out of focus, and when she mummers that she misses her mother. I'm sorry. I really lost it. Like that's my girl right there, and watching her go through this, like I can't. Jocelyn takes off her shoes, which have now pierced into her toes, she is bleeding, and the cuts on her thighs, are showing. She is fully exposed, in ever since, and that damn Vanity Fair reporter, saw everything, and I doubt she will cover any of this up. I love this scene, because we see how being a pop star, is literally an emotionally destroying Jocelyn. The uncomfortable outfit, piercing her skin, the shoes cutting her, this is something a lot of artists go through, just to attain to this, perfect image. 
Lower, Isaac. Ah! Fucking lower. Yeah. You're not a human, Isaac. Don't forget. Now we see Tedro's method of training. In this scene, he forces Isaac to perform better by shocking him if he doesn't, and not shocking him if he does. This is a scene clearly showing Tedros as violent, sadistic side. He believes pain and torture are the best methods to enhance someone's performance. Jocelyn is getting back into another performance, and everyone around her can see she is not well, but they do not care, just like Tedros, her pain is their gain and or pleasure. One of the very many heartbreaking scenes is when Jocelyn calls for her mother, now we see her completely break. And it is devastating to watch. Mom? Oh, Jesus, all over her face. Oh, man. But Jocelyn immediately wants to go again to pretend like nothing is happening. Destiny and Hyam are the only people who try to point out her obvious pain and comfort her. Lily does such an incredible, beautiful job of portraying this character, slowly losing it. Jocelyn is not seen as a human and in turn doesn't want to act like one. Therefore she is trying to avoid expressing emotions in front of everyone, because she too, sees herself as a product, and when Destiny reminds her that she is human, we see Jocelyn choose to still power through it. Something, she is accustomed to doing. She cares too much about everyone's opinion. Also Joss's runny makeup, smudged lip, very much represents her brokenness, and the state of her mind, in disaster. I think it might be time to go home and get some sleep. Nikki comes up to Joss and completely shuts down the shoot, because she can, finally tell Jocelyn is not well. We, all can see Nikki does not really care if she is well, she just wants to get Jocelyn, out of her hair. As an audience we finally see the genuine, physical, emotional, and mental abuse Jocelyn goes through. The fact, that she is going through this, and is still fighting. I was so sad, and heartbroken, like I genuinely cried so much. This is do heartbreaking, and I hate how no one truly cares for her. Without her mother, she is alone in this world. Thanks. Will you go get Diane, bring her here? Thanks so much. You sit down. Sit down. Next, we see Nikki decide to bring out Diane to presumably replace Jocelyn. Now that Jocelyn doesn't benefit her, she has moved on to the next, new thing. Hon, am I going to lose everything? <sighs> Look, again. let We, again see Jocelyn in this beautiful shot, she is not wearing anything revealing, or colorful, like in the episode 1 shot, she is wearing much more layers, with dark hues. Jocelyn, is dealing with the aftermath, her sadness taking over. Nikki scraps Jocelyn's music video. When Hayam lectures Jocelyn, we feel sympathetic for both characters, because we see both their sides. Hayam, seems like a sort of father figure for Jocelyn, he cares for Jocelyn to a degree, and wants to see her succeed, but staying tied to her is hurting his career. Jocelyn invites Tedros to her house again, feeling like he is her only savior. So, is she a better fuck than me? Baby, nobody's a better fuck than you. Diane is at the club with Tedros, and proved everyone's suspicions, she is working with Tedros to screw over Jocelyn. It is also hinted they have a sexual relationship, and, Miss Jenny, I am in love with your acting, Abel's was a step up as well. I am so fully disappointed in Diane, that evil bitch. I knew it was coming, but it still sucked. Jenny plays the villain role to a T, actually making me hate her character. We see Jocelyn struggle to fit into her shoes, because her toes are bleeding. Beauty is quite literally pain. Now Chloe's character scares me, because she has a lot of childlike qualities, and first thing she does is strip nude and dive in a pool. I don't like that implication. He's very godly. The yeah, he heard me sing. And the next thing I knew, he signed me. Leia talks to Isaac, and he explains how he met Tedros, and what he says perfectly depicts how far gone he is. He views Tedros as his savior, his god. He reveals that Tedros is a sort of manager, and in this scene we see Leia put the pieces together. Now Leia is a dumb bitch, but she's not the dumb bitch, so I was hoping and begging for her to figure this out. Billion dollars on this mess. I'm a mess. We see Jocelyn directly say she is a mess, and we see Tedros say he would bet a lot of money on her. Tedros seems to scout incredibly talented individuals but broken emotionally. Every person he has signed is talented but damaged in a sense. We have Diana, narcissist, Isaac, someone dependent on people's approval, 
Chloe, a girl clearly stunted, and now, Jocelyn, a girl with a mental illness, suffering through grief, and seeking approval. All very talented, but have one thing in common, the air all broken, and vulnerable. Cetedros looks for people with these traits, and he takes advantage of that, for his benefit. I want you to get that rope from my closet, tie it around my face, and when Jocelyn says this, I now completely sympathize with her. She in a sense, punishes herself with sex, and she finds freedom in it. As Chloe plays, family, we see Jocelyn picture her perfect family. Also Chloe and Isaac, have such beautiful voices, like damn. Leia sits and watch, and in her expressions, she fully realizes that, now she too, have invited danger into their home, as she watches what Jocelyn feel, at home, she heart. feels so not welcome. Tedros has filled Jocelyn's emptiness, an emptiness left by mother, he has filled it with, the pretense of a new family. We now see that Tedros has fully taken over Jocelyn's life. This was by far, my favorite episode, I can see why they got that standing ovation, this show is far from as controversial as people said, if anything, I think it makes me very, very interested to see what comes next. XO, Phantom. I'm gonna give some information I needed to be received peacefully, calmly, okay? We're the number one trending topic on Twitter. Okay.